today we're not so much grouping anything but we are at the same time sort of what we're actually doing is chronoing my homemade black powder these up here are the previous batch 24 hour tumble eastern red cedar 77 13 10 ratio these five down here are the new batch with a 72 hour tumble which is three days everything's the same except for these have a longer tumble time three of them are one ounce drive key slugs with a 12s0 shot cup and uh two of them out of each are just bird shot number six shot but uh i guess we're gonna try to lay down a group there at 42 yards over a chrono i don't expect anything great but we're mainly just trying to see how much faster is my new batch of powder with the longer tumble time right i suppose so but uh i'm ready when you are the top row is the previous batch with a 24 hour tumble that one's bird shot bird shot bird shot. are they all bird shot no there's three slugs and uh two extra bird shots with that one because i made a video on these gotcha well i'll start with the three slugs Reloading video, that is. Yeah. That is an H&R, or is it an NEF? I don't know. But it's a three and a half inch 12 gauge with a cylinder bore choke in it. The NEF, partner SV1. Okay. Are you ready, sir, for this cloudy this boom? This is 80 grains of my powder, uh, maxi nitro card, 12S0 shot cup, a 20 gauge nitro card, and the one ounce drive key. Right beside point of aim. Yeah. Error three. Dang it. If we can catch one reading out of each, you know, group, we'll be good. Yeah. Error two. What if we don't get any readings? It might not read any. It might not. We might have to uh, get back even farther from the chrono. There you go. 1058. Split with 80 the difference grains. on the two. You did, yeah. 1058 yep. with uh, 80 grains and a 24 hour, 24 hour tumble. Alrighty. We'll bust clays with the bird shot. If you want. Sure. Uh, try the, uh, yeah, those the slug see if they're uh you can get a chrono reading off those all right this is a 72 hour everything's the same except for this has a longer tumble time 1136 more recoil too more recoil for sure i noticed they were look louder for sure oh there's for sure more recoil Ten ninety eight, still higher. And the third slug. Those seem to have significantly more recoil. They do. Eleven thirty nine. Alrighty. Alright. Uh, you want to hand me the gun real quick? I want to try to run one bird shot from each group over the chrono, just to see. Oh Jesus, that is hot. Yeah. I figured you'd figure it out. I figured right too. All right, the bird shot is again everything the same as the slugs except for um, ounce and an eighth. Can you guys hear all these devil bugs? The locusts, yeah. So you ready? Yeah. Air two. You blew the front of the the bag off. Did I? Yep. It's still good. Huh? It's still good. <laughs> you might not have heard it, but I listened to the rest of the BBs go flying out into oblivion. <laughs> ten ten. I can definitely tell the twenty four hour tumble way, way less recoil. Dang it, if only we could get the seventy two hour to chrono. But we done seen with the slugs that the uh, seventy two hour tumble is faster. And it's louder and more recoil. 
So I guess that does prove that longer tumble times do work with shotguns too, not just pistols and rifles. Definitely increase the power. It seemed like it had a, I don't know, it's like it. I was guessing in the, in the reloading video I made on these that in a shotgun it wouldn't make a huge difference. And I, I guess I was kind of right. We gained about 60, 70 FPS. But still, longer tumble time made the powder more powerful. I wish you blasted those with clays or something. Yeah, we can. I think there's some in the truck behind us. There's. 72, 24. <laughs> the 72 hour tumble had a much better group, too. That's the 24. It's over a foot versus like three and a half inches. Yeah. That's pretty good. That's pretty bad. <laughs> I'll just hand throw them for you. Oh, all right. Turn this chrono off too. I'll shoot two of these guys. You shoot two of them. All right. What is it? So there's four shells left. I'll shoot two clays. You shoot two clays. Okay. See so here. I'm gonna try. First one will be the 24 hour powder. The second will be 72. Okay. Try Where am I good thing. at? All right. We should be good. Cam, are you ready? This one is the 72 hour. Okay. Go. Got it. That's a nice thunderous boom. Yeah. 72. This one's 24. Go for it. Got it. Definitely quieter. Yep. All right, here's two clays. We'll need uh, <laughs> one more. I know. I'll grab one more for you right here in just one second. Those are both uh, 24. 24. Yeah. Ooh, that barrel is cooking. Let her fly. Right. Where'd it go? It gone. It turned to straight powder. Go for it. We well, got one more for you, sir. We hit them all. The question is, can I hit him with this 28 gauge? I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but uh, this is a Graw rifle converted to 28 gauge. It's uh, obviously black powder only, but I have 5 8 ounce of 7 and a halves. Josh didn't have a 28 gauge press here, so I loaded that on his 16 gauge press. It's ugly. But it's it should ugly, work but just fine. A little rough the chamber. It'll go. All right. Ready? Yep. Got it. You got him. I'm amazed. Right in the cooler. <laughs> As you can see, guys, thing. we got her back up and operational again. For those uh, of you who don't know, whenever we got this, somebody had soldered with lead now a steel lug to the end of it and had it in a cheap 2x6 stock. Can they see this thing good? Yeah. Okay. Now, it's pinned through the original mounting hardware into a 9130 yeah. Mosin stock. Right here. It had a, uh, like he was saying, original lug or whatever. And Josh uh, ran a nail through it, pinned it in place and all that stuff. But yeah, it's in a Mosin stock, 9130. It's kind of fitting. It's like a grandpa wearing the grandkids' clothes, I guess. Yeah, the Graw rifles are uh, like the predecessor in a way to the Mosins. Very similar action, designed by, I think, the same guy, maybe. I'm not quite sure about that. But they're very similar guns. We're going to take, now, the Magwell. Show them the bottom of it real quick. Obviously, this is a single shot in this configuration. Flip it. Oh no, there we go. As you can see, there's nothing there right now, and it's still got the crude trigger guard that whoever made the original stock for it. But we're thinking about getting a mag well and trigger guard assembly for a 9130, cutting it out and gutting it essentially so it just sits here as yeah. a faux block off plate. What do you think? Is that a good idea? I Maybe think it'll look cool. Come up with a way to put the uh, top hand guard on it. Yeah. That way people see this and they think, oh, cool, you're Mosin. But Wait, that's not days. a Mosin. What in the world is that? <laughs> And before all you purists say we're destroying a nice 9130 stock, this thing come out of a car in a junkyard. If you flip it over, it's got a big crack. The stock's busted all the way up in a way. It's stabilized, it's but glued. still, nonetheless, it's busted and weather checked. And My mom's boyfriend, his name's Patrick, he works at a, uh, a car lot. Junkyard. Yeah. And uh, he was digging around through an old car and found this in the trunk, the, just the stock. It had no gun. So uh, he was like, hey, you want this? Yeah, I'll take it. We stuck it 
on the Gras rifle. <laughs> Made a nice piece of furniture for it. Yeah. And it's 28 gauge, which is really cool. We've shot that old thing a lot, really. Yeah. About the time we got good with it, I made a nice bead and stuff for it. Like I said, we got it hot enough and melted the lead lug out of the bottom of it. We sure did. And that was the end of it. Whoever uh, welded that on there did not know what they were doing. It was literally lead. I think it more broke than melted, but there was no chance that was going to survive long, and it didn't. It looked like somebody threw it together to get rid of it, honestly. <laughs> yeah. It's like, ooh, it ain't worth much laying here as a trigger and a pipe. Let me throw it in this tuba six I routed out with a freaking doll beaver. And it's what it was. <laughs> the stock was just a two by six that someone chiseled out with a butter knife. It, it was no ergonomics to it, neither. Like, everything no. was, like, on the wrong plane. and Stock was too short, even shorter than the Mosin stocks are. Really short length of pull. It had a super steep comb, or, yeah, the comb. It was hard to side it because the barrel pointed down at the ground instead of straight like it should it's an odd thing to try to sight and hit anything with but it's in a Mosin stock now the siding plane is perfect it's just like a Mosin it's just like shooting your 9130 really length of pull is still too short like all other Mosins <laughs> and SKS's but it's cool anyway yeah longer tumble time for black powder works in shotguns too I kind of figured it would but I didn't think it would make a huge difference, and it didn't. Maybe it would with better black powder. But, uh, yeah, we want to thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe. Check out the Patreon, all that stuff if you want to, in the description below. But we'll see you in the next one. Cue outro.